Hi everyone, good morning. It's Margaret Manning here. Welcome to 60 and Me. Welcome to another day in your life. I hope you're, you're doing great. Hope you're feeling all right. How's everybody doing? <laughs> I really do think about that every time I start these talks that here I am sitting in my world, uh, you know, communicating to you via an online tool. And, uh, you know, just knowing that there's just so much complexity and, um, and wonder in our lives and everyone is somewhere, you know, unique on their journey. So I hope that you know that this is a safe place for you to be, that we're here to kind of help each other and raise the conversation about things that we think a lot of people uh, are caring about. And today I've got something that I think is probably on the mind of most of us at one time or another in our lives, some more intensely than others. But, um, but first, tea. <laughs> my tea this morning is I'm drinking my lemon ginger from Yogi, my Yogi tea. And I've put something in my tea this morning, which is a little bit different. I've just added some lemon. And I don't always use a lemon. I just got this little uh, liquid lemon juice from Cecilia, from Sicily. So um, anyway, cheers, everybody. Hope you've got a cup of tea or coffee and uh, juice, smoothie, whatever. And uh, just sit back and relax for a bit because... Health is one of the topics I want to touch on today, but kind of in an indirect way. Um, you know, we get to be 60 plus and we start thinking, you know, we better eat better. We better exercise. We better take our vitamins and, you know, we just, just do all those things that are going to ensure a healthy lifestyle. And yeah, we do it as a, as a, you know, as a ritual. And I think most of us put effort into that. When I read your comments about in response to articles on health, you know, you all seem to have a pretty good handle on what your body needs and, um, you know, you're doing good things for your health, but there's something that we might be missing out on, which I think is really important to consider. And it's maybe not uh, directly related to obesity and weight loss, but it definitely is related. And that's loneliness social isolation. Now, some of you may be sitting there, you know, f surrounded by people, lots of friends, lots of family, and, uh, you know, feel like your life is way too busy and you're having a great time. And then just remember that there are people at the other side of that spectrum. There are people who are by themselves, lonely, just feeling a little bit unable to connect with the world, just feeling that they don't belong, that they just don't fit in. And the statistics um, really are, are supporting this statement. I mean, in the United States alone, there's approximately 42.6 million people, 42.6 million who suffer from chronic loneliness. And that means it's a recurring event in their life regularly. There's about more than half of the, a quarter of the people live alone and a half of people are unmarried. So may have friendships, partnerships, not married, but that's a big number for people who are living their lives on their own, not just on a financial, uh, from a financial perspective, but also just from a, you know, engagement. And of course, you know, we've talked about this many times as you get a little older, all those contextual friendships, you know, that you got from work and your, from your children, your, your family life it are now moved, have moved on. And you now are you know, not having that context to make new friends. So the a recent study by the American Psychological Association said, and I'll quote, loneliness and social isolation may represent a greater health hazard than obesity. OK, so why does loneliness matter so much? It matters because, um, you know, it, 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 it complicates an already complicated situation. Um, if you're not um, uh, engaged socially, uh, it's been sh shown by many, many studies that uh, the, the social engagement is a long uh, is a, a criteria for longevity and long life because it does just something to your body. It creates, um, uh, you know, a, a, a set of hormones and, uh, and chemicals that make us feel like we want to see life from a positive perspective. And that makes a huge difference. For those of you who have j challenges with eating, food is a very easy substitute for love. It doesn't ask any questions. As they say, chocolate cake doesn't ask questions. It just is a filler. You know, it's a filler for that empty space inside of you. So that's kind of the, the, the gist of this con conversation today, that uh, if, if social isolation and loneliness has more of an impact on your longevity and your, and your health and your obesity than any other factor, then I think it's something worth looking at. So I've got to admit, you know, I mean, I'm, I know we talk about, um, you know, I talk about your situations and I try to relate to what you're going through. But believe me, I have had periods in my life and even to this day, I have periods where I feel very lonely. 
Um, it's so it's so ironic to say that because I've got hundreds of thousands of women in our community who are so supportive of 60 and Me and of me personally, giving us lots of great feedback. But you know, there's something about when you turn the lights off at night and you're by yourself and you just realize there's some gaps. You know, then you start to feel that loneliness. And trust me, I you are not the only one that gets up at that point makes a cheese sandwich or some kind of snack, sneaks back into bed and nibbles their way to sleep. You know, it just happens. And so I think this is getting to the root of loneliness and social isolation can not only make us more positive and in you know, generating those endorphins that make us happy and, you know, enjoying life, but also that remind us to keep our bodies healthy and fill that emptiness with other things, with laughter, with people and with experiences. So what can you do? What can we do to combat this loneliness epidemic? Well, we can do a lot. Um, and we were starting it right here, actually, with 60 and Me, with our community, getting connected, providing ways for people to get connected and for them to communicate and encourage others to do the same is a really good first start. Now, so if you're part of the 60 and Me community, you, you've signed up to get our newsletters. There's no charge, by the way. You just join uh, and we get send you newsletters, giving you links to our videos and other articles. You know, then that's a really useful way to share. You can share those, inter those articles with people, connect with people that you know on Facebook as an acquaintance, and then take the relationship a little further. So there's ways to be connected that, that actually can you know, help with the loneliness and distract you from those lonely feelings that might come against you, um, up against your, you know, your best intentions. So finding meaningful ways to communicate and exchange information is important. Now, I would think personally that we are all benefiting from technology. I mean, I remember, I mean, you all do, that when we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have any way of talking to each other. We didn't have smartphones to connect onto social networks like Facebook and Google and uh, Instagram and Twitter. All those places, yes, they don't take you deep, deep, deep. They don't reach through the screen and give you a hug. <laughs> but they do connect you with people, family and friends, and they give you just a basis for a conversation. You know, then that conversation can take you further. Now, we've talked about this before, and I don't mean to be a broken record, but it really is one of the few ways that you can physically get connected to people, and that is to get out in the world, and that's to go out there, join clubs, join groups that are you know, doing things of common interest to you. If you like to knit, sew, read, um, whatever you love, I guarantee you there's a group out there in your community that's doing something. Perhaps it's a religious group and that doesn't, you know, it's any, any variety of religion. It could be something very abstract and, and spiritual. It could be more of a specific um, faith-based uh, group that you, that you feel really strongly about. Don't let the fact that you feel lonely stop you from reaching out. I mean, it's, it's just one of those vicious circles, isn't it? You feel, oh, I'm, I'm not feeling very friendly today or I'm not feeling very sociable. You say that? But if you get out there, you'll find that a lot of the people in that, in that group are the same. They're there because they feel that way. And so it's a great opportunity. Join a group. Try, try to do something. And we talked about Meetup. Meetup's a great place to go to. Meetup.com online. Another thing to do is to get active. And I've said this a thousand times. And trust me, this is, my, this is actually the only way that I can snap out of a lonely streak. If I go out walking in the world, looking at people, watching the kids, watching the people, moms with their, with their little ones. And, you know, just that whole feeling of being grateful for what I've got. Um, so exercise. Doesn't matter whether it's yoga, Pilates, um, swimming, just something. And just do it. <laughs> do it several times a day, several times a week. Get out and just enjoy the world. Another thing you can do um, if you're feeling a little bit lonely and, and so on is to, is to go and share your skills. If you, if you know how to do something really well and it's something that you've actually uh, practiced and, and got, has some expertise in, teach it to someone else. Volunteer. I mean, I know in the States a lot of the schools have volunteer programs for parents, but they welcome older people too. 
There was a guy, I saw a video of this man who goes to hospitals and he hugs babies. He's a, I don't know what his background is, but he just goes in and hugs the little ones that are in the um, premature, preemie ward, the, the, the NICU, and he looks after them. And they, of course, the hospital's got to agree to this and you have to sort of talk them into it. But if it's something that makes you feel useful and have with purpose, go ahead and do it. Try. Another thing is to learn. Just learn something new. If you've wanted to do pottery all your life, go and try it. Painting classes. Uh, there's a lot of community based stuff that goes on all around the world. You just have to look for it. It's, it's funny. Yesterday I was looking actually, um, this is kind of off, off the beaten, off the track, but it's, it's related. I went to look for toys for my little grandson. And they have places here where you can basically rent the toys. You don't have to spend a lot of money on toys. And you can go and choose them. There's a membership fee, very small, but you just can pick up puzzles and games. And it's very, very cool. But I went in there and this place was packed with toys. I was the only person in there. It was really strange. And I felt like I wanted just to go outside and shout like, hey, guys, if you have children, come in here. There's toys. <laughs> but it's just an example that things can be going on in your community that you have no idea about. And it can be something that might really, really uh, help you. That's another thing, by the way, if you live in the UK, I just thought of that. Um, volunteers uh, in uh, the charity shops, they always need help. And those are people that are giving donations of their clothing or household items. And then you can just help to uh, put them out and um, share them, you know, at a price with other people, but charity shops. So anyway, that's just another um, thing to do. Another final point that I might make is that you've got friends out there in the world that you had many years ago. Maybe they're on Facebook now. Reconnect. Try to find those people, even, even your high school friends. I have connected with my high school from Michigan uh, in the last five, three or four years. I'm telling you, we have such great conversations. And there are little people popping up that I had such a warm feeling for that, um, you know, I just I'm so happy that we're connected again. And again, loneliness doesn't always require... Um, you know, a physical presence. Uh, it's, it's just that, that, you know, being connected and being important to someone. Having someone ask you questions, even simple ones like, how are you doing? And then listen. <laughs> so anyway, I, I think loneliness is related to health in so many ways. Um, just getting connected to people will help you feel better about yourself and less connected to food and other short-term feel-goods. Just make it a deeper feel-good. So anyway, I hope that's been helpful. And I think my last thing I want to say to you is, please tell your friends about 60 and Me. Tell them because, I mean, there's other women out there that you maybe haven't seen in a while that you know are feeling a little lonely and a little isolated. Perhaps they've had a loss or they're just feeling down. Tell them about 60 and Me. I mean, we're certainly not the cure-all for everything, but here we are. <laughs> we're all here listening to this video and we're, you know, getting some idea of um, how we might change patterns in our lives and that we're all together we're not on a solo journey we're here for for each other and we're here for you so tell your friends about 60 and me that would be fantastic and um i guess the question i'd like to ask you is do you think that loneliness really is detrimental to our health and how do you engage with other people on a regular basis tell us if you think it's a real health issue loneliness and then what you do to stay connected so leave your comments in the section below. Let's have a conversation, have a chat and uh, like and, and share each other's comments. Just get engaged. And um, I really do appreciate your time here. Thank you for coming again. Have a super day. Have a really nice time out there in the world. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye bye for now.